Brain imaging techniques have been around for a long time, but there are very few of those techniques that can be used in very young infants. And it's really important to understand the developing brain if we're going to understand conditions such as autism and get early diagnosis and possible intervention. Autism is a developmental disorder that affects around one in a hundred children in the UK. Classically, what we would have done in the past is to look at children when they're two years and upwards when autism can be diagnosed. Now what we're doing is looking at babies who have a brother or sister with autism and starting to look at their behaviour and brain responses early on and say, can we identify areas in development where they differ from babies who have no family risk of autism? So we've been developing technologies using light, which is non-invasive, to enable us to image very young infants within the first few months and year of life. One of the major challenges of beginning this PhD was to actually work out how we use this equipment with infants. So how do we design a headgear that will fit on an infant that they won't notice, that's comfortable, that's not too heavy and that they can wear while they're doing sort of everyday activities like watching the television, interacting with their parents and caregivers or even just playing on a mat while we're sitting with them. So we had to come up with a new design that enabled the sources and detectors that we use for our technology to stay securely and safely and robustly on the head. The technique that we use is called near-infrared spectroscopy. It essentially uses near-infrared light to pass through the tissue and measure the colour of the blood inside the tissue, and in this case inside the brain. The colour of the blood is dependent on how much oxygen is being carried. Oxygenated blood appears bright red, but when the oxygen has been taken out of the blood, it will appear more of a blue or purple colour. So if we shine the light into the baby's brains, we can measure the colour of the blood and therefore the oxygen distribution in the brain. And this gives us information about how a baby is processing uh, different information with different regions of their brain. The study itself involves the infant sitting on their parent's lap in front of a screen. On the screen we project a range of different images. These can be social images like an actress playing peekaboo or itsy bitsy spider. Or they can be mechanical images of tractors or cars. At the same time, we'll be playing a variety of different sounds. And so by monitoring these babies' brains as we're providing all these different visual and sound stimuli, we can look at how they're reacting. What we found so far is that the infants who are at risk of developing autism have a different response to the human social cues. So the real breakthrough here is that this technology has enabled us to measure these infants younger than anyone has done before to show these differences between a group of infants who are at low risk of developing autism and a group that are at a high risk of developing autism. Solving this engineering problem has been a huge benefit in enabling us to have much more confidence and ambition in the type of measurements that we can go on to do in these very young infants. Now on an engineering front, we want to make the equipment even more lightweight and completely portable and actually wireless so we can start to investigate infants in a very natural environment. So instead of them sitting on their parents' lap in front of a screen, they'll be playing in a playgroup setting and we'll be able to image their brains as they're doing that. And I think what it's going to do is to increase the ambition of the studies that neurodevelopmental psychologists can do to really chart the progression of brain development from those very early days, weeks and months through to the effects that it's having in infancy and childhood. As engineers we have to be careful always that we're responding to an unmet need and there's a real unmet need in this area. This project is a really good example of why it's so exciting to be working in medical physics and bioengineering at the moment. We never know quite where the problems are going to come from for the research projects that we're involved in, but I guess what gets us out of bed in the morning is the idea that we know we're going to be solving real-life problems. <laughs>